Up next, a look at Shadowrun 6th Edition Beginner Box from Catalyst Game Labs, the newest introduction to the world of Shadowrun and its new 6th Edition. Catalyst Game Labs, after some cajoling, provided <laughs> us a review copy of Shadowrun 6th Edition Beginner Box. No other compensation was provided. I'll admit I had to work for this one. This they, they did not want to give me this box set. So hopefully, hopefully this makes them happy with that. So the Shadowrun 6 World Beginner Box was designed by O.C. Presley, was published by Catalyst Game Labs in 2019. And this I had no idea, but is fascinating to me. Under license from Tops, yes, the playing card or collective, what are you, uh, trading, card, trading, trading card, trading card company. They own the rights to Shadowrun. I had no idea. Well, the best way to see what you get in this RPG box set is to check out our Shadowrun 6 World Beginner Box unboxing video over on YouTube a link to which we will be sure to put in the show notes. Now, I gotta say, reviewing an RPG is quite different from reviewing a board game. And reviewing an RPG box set is even different from that. So what I think I'm gonna do today is go through each of the different things you give in the box, sharing my thoughts on each as I go, and then at the end, I'll do kind of an overall impression. Now, what I do need to note, and this is important, is this is what I call a read review. Due to the global pandemic, I have not gotten a chance to actually sit down and play this RPG box set. If and when that actually happens, what I'll probably do is publish a follow-up actual play review. But for now, you're just going to have to go on what I thought from looking at, touching, and reading what you get in this box set. Now, even outside conditions like this, read reviews are not uncommon and help to set expectations without coloring the, the, the coloring that a specific group's style might bring to a game when they mm -hmm. inevitably start poking at it from all different directions. I said, just want to make it clear, I've only read this one. So, again, I'm just going to go through what you get in this box set bit by bit with my thoughts on each. So, first off, you get a great two-sided what to read next page. Now, this is something that, in my opinion, should be in every box set that's ever been made, possibly even most board games, especially if there's multiple books or multiple sets of contents. And this particular one does a good job of telling you where to start and what you need to do to play as soon as possible. So, even what you could skip over if you really just want to get the game to the table. There is nothing worse than getting a big hunk of reading, settling down, and a hundred pages in, find out that the book you thought made sense to read first relies heavily on that other book over there you haven't touched yet. Yeah, I've definitely experienced that one. Next, you've got the dice. Now, these are some sweet-looking purple on black custom dice. Now, Shadowrun always has been, since the start, continues to be a D6 dice pool base game. I think anyone out there that knows Shadowrun knows it. It's one of those games where you need tons of dice. Now, in the system, which I'll dive into further, ones can lead to glitches, and fives and sixes are hits. So these particular dice feature this traditional Shadowrun horned skull. It's something off the original first edition book. That replaces the ones. Now, the fives and sixes have this Shadowrun S. It's this Aztec-looking snake that's there along with the fives and sixes. So it just makes it clear to see if you have a potential glitch or hits. Otherwise, they're standard D6. And really, you can't go wrong giving a role player more dice. And since it is a beginner box, you need to make sure that those players don't need anything else in case yes. they really are trying this as their first ever game. And I totally agree. And I'm sure Ryan in the chat will bring it up. No, it does not come with a pencil, which is something he has complained in the past that RPG beginner boxes always claim to give you everything you need, but don't give you pencils. This does not. I apologize. Sorry, Catalyst did not give us pencils. So the next thing in the box is a four-page pamphlet entitled An Instant Guide to the Sixth World. Now, this tells you a bit about the Shadowrun setting. In particular, this new sixth edition has a sixth world. Uh, it talks about how everything has a price. That's a big push for Shadowrun. Details what it means to be a Shadowrunner, because Shadowrun is, in particular, a, a very different game than, say, Cyberpunk 2020. In Shadowrun, you play a Shadowrunner who is someone who is hired by corporations to do runs against other corporations. It's a set expectation. Uh, it gives you a timeline for the setting and then points out 10 of the biggest corporations with a focus on how one of the ones from the previous setting no longer is and there's a new big 10. I got to say I was a little disappointed with this one because I have previously reviewed the 5th edition box set, which you'll be able to find links on the blog and you can read that up. And I found this disappointing as an intro to the setting. While this did give me an idea what the game was about, it didn't make me excited. Like I wasn't like, oh, that sounds awesome. I was just like, 
okay, yeah, here's these 10 corporations. And it told me how many employees they have and what their stock market ticker was. But it didn't tell me who as technology is or why I would care. So I thought that was the last box, a much better job, detail setting intro. And like it even included part of a run novel. Just did a better job of getting me excited about the world. Also, I take issue with anything that's called instant and requires four pages of reading. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's not instant. They expect you to just plug it in and download it to your cortical stack. That's the problem. And I just, I didn't have mine handy. Uh, up next are four character dossiers. You've got Zip File, the Dwarf Decker. You, the Elf Covert Ops Specialist slash Face. Frostburn, the Orc Combat Mage. And Rude, the Troll Street Samurai. Uh, these dossiers are honestly the highlight of this box set. Each is seven pages long and starts off with basically a character sheet in the middle of two pages with all these call outs on the outside telling you how to read it. Every detail on that character sheet is explained clearly and concisely. In addition to mechanics on the first couple pages, there's a whole section on background, who this character is, who their contacts are, who their friends are, a section on preferred tactics, so how to play the character tactically, and role-playing tips for each character. Now, each book also has an example shadow run in the back of it, which is a short story, which is supported by a sidebar that shows how the mechanics of the game apply to that story. Finally, every character has a bunch of specific tables that are important to that player class. So for example, the orc mage has the tables for casting spells, whereas the street samurai doesn't. I gotta say, these are a huge improvement over the dossiers from the fifth edition box set. The fifth edition box set were full fifth edition characters with all the skills, all the bits and bobs, all the numbers, everything there that left so many unanswered questions that you didn't get answers to until you bought the full reset rule set like it was just there's so much on there that wasn't used for the quick start it was terrible here every detail is explained even if some of them were just to say these rules aren't used in the box set but use this as a role-playing prompt and see this is something that is amazing for onboarding new players with in games like this it might sound fun to play a combat mage but there could very well be a lot of mechanics that can make it overwhelming and result in players just saying, uh, maybe I'll just play a fighter today or, you know, mm -hmm. what the equivalent in, in, in any given game, I hesitate to try that class that may fit better with them, their style, mm -hmm. their personality, but seems like a lot of work. Whereas this, you've got all that information so yep. well laid out right there for you to make it an easy step in. No, I agree. The onboarding here is top notch. Now, along with the character box, this goes right with that, is a significant deck of cards, 55 in total. These include gear, weapons, cyber decks, drones, armor, a vehicle, basically anything the characters could use during the game. And when you go through the dossier, it literally says, grab these cards for your character. And then there's also, on the GM side, a number of NPC cards for the major players in the Battle Royale, which I'll be talking about in a bit. Now, I do admit, I really wish these cards had some art on them because they are just pure text and tables, but I got, I'm just so happy to see them. Like, yeah, Shadowrun has so many years of art. Why is there not art? But you know what? I love having cards during RPGs. I would much rather reference the card that's right in front of me than have to look up something in a rule book. Yeah, this is an aspect of RPGs that I wish had been there when I was actively playing them. The idea of not having to have books and tables and charts full of items and spells and whatnot, and just being able to have exactly what my character has right mm -hmm. there in front of me in my hand, it's fantastic. Yeah, I, I don't understand the people who don't like using things like that, like cards. It makes no sense to me. You're not allowed to make things easier. If it's not hard, it's not work. It's not playing. Yeah, maybe, know. maybe <laughs> that's what it is. I don't know. I don't know what it is. So next we have the actual quick start rules. Uh, this is the biggest book in the box, the biggest chunk. Um, this explains the rules sixth edition of Shadowrun. Now that's way more than I'm going to get into here because this is a 24 page book and it's dense. There's a lot of text, and not a lot of pictures. Um, and I don't need to get into every little detail, but what I will do, is just give a brief overview. So your basic system. And as far as I know, this is one that's never changed in Shadowrun is that you have stats and skills 
And when attempting to do something, you build a dice pool based on one skill and one stat. You just add the numbers together and grab that many dice. You then roll that pool. You count fives and sixes as hits. And you're trying to beat a threshold set by the DM. So you want to get more hits than whatever the DM set. Or if you're playing against, like, a, if you're in a fight or it's an opposed role, you're trying to get more hits than your opponent or your opposed role. Now, this edition of the game does have some story game elements that are new to Shadowrun. First off is what they call the glitch system. If you roll more ones, then you roll successes, a glitch happens. And what blew me away here is that I would have expected a botch system. To me, I'm thinking traditional role-playing game. I roll too many ones. I botch something stupid's going to happen. I'm going to shoot myself in the foot or my gun's going to break or something. But that's not it in this game. What a glitch means in this edition of Shadowrun is that something interesting happens, which is in addition to succeeding or failing on your die roll. And that fact of, that, that's something very story gamey, right? It's the, I made it, I succeeded, but, or I failed and. I love seeing that. So this, we're at four pages, plus another seven for each character. Before we get to the quick start, that's 24 more yep. pages. Uh, <laughs> now, this is actually one of my big complaints about any dice pool system, complexity. Uh, learning how and build, to do it and building dice pools, while a great mechanic, it's, it's a fan, I, you know, I love a lot of these di dice pool games. It's going to be harder than roll a d20 against this stat or roll a d20 against this number. It, you just can't avoid it. Uh, and for play, I've had players, especially when looking at uh, doing online gaming, indicate that there's a uh, concern about the speed bumps introduced by pausing to sort of build, figure out what your dice pool is going to be and, and what the complex, you know, what the difficulty mm -hmm. level is going to be and do all that. Whereas you could just say, roll me against a difficulty 17 in a more standard dice system. Again, I, I, so. I, I do I love the dice pool system, but it's something I've been, I've been seeing lately. So to add to that, the, again, going back to onboarding and those character sheets, they have done all the math. And I talked about how every character sheet has a set of tables specific to them. They have one of those tables are standard dice rolls. And it's all the dice rolls they expect a player playing that character to make while playing the adventure in this book with all the math done. Right. So this does remove it. But if you were playing the full game, you would be doing that whole stat plus thing gives me a dice pool of X yeah. every time. Now, there is one other very much story game element added to this, and I'm kind of wishing Jeff Seuss was in our chat room for this one, and that is Edge. Edge is a resource that all players have, all characters have, and it's, it's I don't know how they determine. There is no character generation, so that's worth noting. Um, it's set at whatever level, and at the start of each situation or each scene, each thing you're about to start rolling for, you have an edge set that gives you amount of edge and they recommend using like poker chips or something to track this. There are spots in the character sheet you can mark off, but I would definitely use something. And you start with your set edge and every round you can earn up to two more. Now edge is earned well for having an edge, which to me fits really well in a shadow run cyberpunk game. If you have an edge on your opponent, you get another edge point right so if you have better gear so one of the things you do is you compare your attack rating on your weapon to the defense rating of your opponent's armor if your attack rating is more than four higher than the defense rating you get an edge that's mechanically how it works being prepared can give you an edge having things like cover can give you edge being out in the rain might give edge to one side versus another having the right cyberware and so on there's all kinds of ways to earn edge now edge is spent to do things like modify the die rolls hit automatically create special effects and so on and this is the biggest new thing to this edition of Shadow Edition. And this is what, for fans, from what I've seen online, is the deal breaker or the, the wonderful new thing. This is causing so much division in the fan community. People love or hate Edge. Now, I got to say, reading it, it sounds interesting. Though I got to say, abstracting things like gunpowder versus armor into a simple you has Edge, who does not? really doesn't sound like Shadowrun to me. Like it's always been one of those crunchy gear based games. And that just sounds like it's simplifying it to a level that doesn't feel like Shadowrun anymore. But I've only read the book. So this is part of the system. This is, I think the biggest part of the system that I can't judge until I actually see it used at the table. Now it's interesting because again, I've been reading the cyberpunk game, Hack the Planet lately, uh, which is Forged in the Dark System. And this concept of edge, while different than, than what's done uh, in Forge of the Dark seems very 
uh, familiar to me as yeah. it's part of the mechanical system in that Forge to the Dark where you're using general comparisons rather than fiddling with every detail. Now, it sounds a little bit like Shadowrun may have sort of kept a lot of the fiddling in there to get the comparisons done mm. uh, because, again, Shadowrun's a little more of an older school system compared to the Forge in the Dark system. Mm. But uh, in, in a lot of this, the Forge to the Dark and these newer story games, what you're getting is this abstraction where it doesn't matter that this corp uses these armor and these guns and these things and you use this, this, and this. No, the DM says, look, they've got an edge over you by two, so your difficulty shifts by two. And that's yeah. that's just how it is. Now, again, Shadowrun, being an older school, has taken that and mechanicized yes. it a little bit. So mm -hmm. there, there, there's still the mechanics and the abstraction, um, whereas Forge in the Dark tends to just go straight to the abstraction. The GM says, no, this is a tier three uh, team. You're a tier one team. It's two levels yeah. of difficulty between you, period. I still say it's surprising to see in a game like Shadowrun. It's, it's an interesting progression of the system. But like you said, it's still crunchy. It's still got that crunch. But to me, like having full cover, all it does is give me plus one edge just didn't seem... I, I am not, I am more of a story gamer that like, I'm not a realist, but it just feels like if I have full cover, I should have like some defensive bonus other right. than I get one edge, right? Like it just, it, it's so abstracted. But again, I have no clue. Maybe at the table, this works fantastic. Maybe at the table, I'd hate it. Right. So this leads me up to the Battle Royal Adventure book. I mentioned this earlier. Um, my biggest complaint about Shadowrun 5th edition box set was the included adventure. Because this is Shadowrun. This is a game about doing shadow runs, getting hired by Mr. Johnson to do a job and then do the job and then get paid for it. Instead of having a run, it was a firefight in a 7-Eleven called the Stuffer Shack. Now, I've since learned the Stuffer Shack is a shout out to a staple of Shadowrun as it was the adventure in the back of the original softcover rulebook. So I get it. If you're a Shadowrun fan, it's like, oh, look, the Stuffer Shack. But it just wasn't a good way to me to introduce new players to the setting. I'm like, you're shadow runners, show a shadow run. Now, I don't know if someone read my review of the last one or heard us complain on the podcast, or if it wasn't just me that complained, but this new six world box set has completely fixed that problem. Well, it's not a traditional shadow run, there's no meet Mr. Johnson. Battle Royal is a full adventure. In keeping with tradition, though, I thought this was cute. It does start off in the stuffer shack but very quickly moves on to an extraction mission in the middle of a four-sided gang turf war. Now, the adventure's written well, uh, features the possibility of multiple vectors to get through it, including combat, talking, or stealth, or a combination of all of the above, which hopefully, I'm, I, again, I've only read it, I would hope players playing through would do more of the things, but you could just focus on one of those three vectors. Um, my hope would be the group splits up and each does their own thing, and then you get to see all the different sides. Um, my only complaint, though, is what I mentioned about that setup, that this seems like it could be a bit much for a new GM. you got four different, as far as I can tell, well-known Shadowrun gangs from like previous editions or stories that have four different lieutenants the gangs all have different stats. They all have different equipment. The lieutenants have their own personalities. They're potentially all about to fight each other at once with the players stuck in the middle. And that seems like an awful lot for a new DM to, to take care of, like to, to manage. Now, I will admit they did provide cards for all the major players. You got a card for each gang, and then you have a card for each lieutenant. And then there's cards, excuse me, there's cards for all the equipment. But I don't know. I, that seems like a lot to keep track of. Again, I haven't run it. I haven't played it at the table. I haven't seen it. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like it could be overwhelming. Yeah, it almost sounds like they're leaning towards fresh players, but with a GM who's not quite as green as those players are. Yeah, that's highly possible too. Like I, th I have a feeling that, again, I think the marketing on this for a, for a lot of the Shadowrun projects are this is being sold to Shadowrun fans. So that could be part of it. Now... The, the last thing in the box is a nice two-sided poster map. Uh, one side has a map of the Seattle Sprawl. This is uh, the default setting for Shadowrun and has been for years. And on the other are a bunch of maps for the Battle Royal Adventure, which I really appreciate because the last 
version of this box did not have that. The best part though, and I tested this myself, is it felt like it had plastic coating. Sure enough, it does. And this works with dry erase markers. That is awesome. Having a dry erase marker map in the box, that is awesome. And this is a nice touch that I honestly would not expect in a beginner box where you kind of figure the materials are going to be one and done because they want yeah. you to buy the full system once you're happy with it. So that's everything you get in the box. So my thoughts on it. So straight up, this is way better than the fifth edition, like almost in every way. I reviewed the fifth edition starter set. Deanna dropped a link in the chat. We'll throw a link in the show notes. At this point, I don't know who would want to go back to fifth edition anyway, but I'm sure there are purists out there. Overall, this is just a better onboarding system to the Shadowrun world. This is so much better to onboard players to the mechanics of the game. Now, it doesn't include a ton of information, that isn't explained, which is nice. There was nothing that isn't used. And it includes a full adventure, which is so much better than just a fight in a stuffer shack. Now, while the last starter set might have been good for getting Shadowrun players into a new edition, and that was pretty much my end, my overall thoughts on the last one was this is probably a great box to get people who haven't played Shadowrun in years back into the into the game. I think this is a great box to get people who have never played Shadowrun into this new world. It is definitely better geared towards people experiencing Shadowrun for the first time. Now, that said, the one thing the old box I found actually did better was to hook players on the world, the, the setting of Shadowrun. This Styx World starter set seemed to lack something to get you excited to be a Shadowrunner, something that made me want to explore the world. Now, it did have that little four-page book with some setting material. In the back of the Stuffer Shack, or, or sorry, not the Stuffer Shack, the, the Adventure, has a bunch of descriptions of the different sections of Seattle. There just wasn't a lot to draw you in. Whereas the fifth edition box set had much more detailed setting information and even included a short novella. Like, there are tons of Shadowrun novels out there. And it was also a good way to even promote the fact that you could buy Shadowrun novels. I would have liked to have seen something like that into this box set. Well, I guess at some point, they need to figure out what to cut from the box, or it's no longer a beginner box. Yeah. It's just the DM guide with handouts. Uh, they do seem like they're trying to find the balance, though, even if, from version to version, they're teetering yeah. one way and then the other on some things. No, I totally agree. Now, I am happy to say that if you've ever been curious about checking out Shadowrun, this is a solid way to dive in the latest version, the latest. This spot is great for getting into the mechanics right away and playing quickly. Now, if you're already a Shadowrun fan, I'm not sure you need this one. Like, this really is made for new players. The basic concepts are going to be mostly what you remember. I think if the main thing you want to learn about is this new edge system, there are plenty of people talking about it online. I don't think you need this box to explain it to you. You can easily find that online. If you're thinking of checking out the new sixth edition, you're probably better off now that it's out. Just pick, start right with the core handbook. Though there is some neat bits in here, right? So if you want some cool looking dice and that nice Seattle sprawl map, maybe it's worth picking up the box set for that. Well, for a more in-depth look at Shadowrun 6th Edition Beginner Box, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.